Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's update, we got a red heifer update. I know several of you folks have been asking regarding the age of said red heifers, five of them from Texas. We've got an answer for that. And we're also going to take a look uh, in depth tonight in regards to um, Russian President Vladimir Putin's speech this morning, which was... uh, chilling frankly um plenty of specifics on that we're going to spend the bulk of the time on that um and as far as all this stuff relates to bible prophecy the red heifers uh for those of you not familiar a red heifer pure blood or a pure uh, ceremonially clean spotless heifer needs to be sacrificed for purification purposes on behalf of uh, the nation of Israel prior to them need to be ceremonially clean before they could enter a temple and worship in the temple. And so many think that this red heifer needs to be burned, sacrificed for purification purposes before a third temple, which is prophesied uh, to be built and will be standing during the end times. So, Uh, We're interested in that. And then, of course, we're very interested in Russia as well. Uh, Ezekiel 38, 39, Gog of Magog. Magog, ancient uh, ancient Magog, is essentially modern-day Russia. Uh, The Magogians, as they were called uh, in biblical times, the Jewish historian Josephus connected the dots with the Greeks, who the Greeks called the Scythians. So Magogians, Scythians, they are synonymous. And it points to modern-day Russia. I mean, even the Russians themselves want to be called, they they recognize themselves as ancient Scythians. So it's it's really not much of a stretch. So, But before we get into that, let's go back to the red heifers. So again, many questions. Well, how old are these red heifers? Uh, and I think we've got an answer to that. Uh, I was under the impression they were calling them heifers. So I would have thought that, uh, and I suppose technically a heifer is a female bovine cow that has not given birth is a heifer. Once it gives birth, it is no longer a heifer. It's a cow. Um, But the, uh, the, the, the question was, is how old are they? And it would appear they are almost one year old based on some of the comments here in, um, This article, and this is from Israel365news.com. Again, that's from uh, Adam Berkowitz. Does great work. Great stuff. Writes all kinds of great, interesting articles. Highly recommend following Israel365news.com. But they were talking about how they were going to get these these heifers over to Israel. And timing was critical. We needed to wait until after they were weaned at five months, but we had to bring them to Israel before they were a year old, as it is not allowed to ship livestock that is one year old. So said heifers are not one year old, and we know uh, that they were not going to turn one year old until October. Where is that? I know I had read that in this article. Um, I may have scanned past it. Here we go. We found other flights, but flights from Texas only fly live livestock out in October because of the intense heat in the summer. But by October, the cows would have been one year old and Israel would not have accepted them at that age. 12 months old is a clear cutoff. So the heifers are 11 months old is the answer. And, you know, we get this confirmed again. Uh, Stipulations regarding temperature. Final arrangements were made last week for the flight to Israel. And we knew that if they didn't work, the deadline might pass and they would be too old. I was sitting in Israel, my eyes glued to a flight tracker until I saw on the flight tracker the plane was in the air. I wasn't sure that Israel would have a red heifer. Now, here's this is fascinating. The flight to Israel and preparation cost over $250,000 for these five red heifers. Now that they are in Israel, the heifers will need to be raised until they are at least 
two years old. So we're probably looking at October 2023. There are five heifers that the cost to feed them is $10 a day per cow. $50 feeds the entire group of cows for one day. So if you want to support the health of these red heifers, you can click on this link, <laughs> donate 50 bucks to feed a red heifer for a day. So there's your answer. Uh, the heifers are, they'll be one year old in October. Okay. There's your red heifer update. Uh, with that, we're going to go to Google Maps and kind of get a lay of the land. Uh, obviously, Moscow, Ukraine, and I'm going to leave this open. Specifically, we're going to get to, uh, well, Belarus. We're going to talk a little bit about Belarus, uh, Armenia down here in the Caucasus, Kazakhstan. No many people know of Kazakhstan because of the movie Borat. I get it. Uh, and then the last two, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, and they're fighting right now. But of course, so is uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan. Um, and then we have all this going on in Ukraine. But the the thing to take away from this is that, you know, Russia's borders are on fire and we have scrapes and fights. You got about three of them going on. One Russia is involved with directly. Azerbaijan, Armenia, Armenia, the old Soviet republics involved with one. And then again, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan down here in the Southeast, they're fighting with each other and they're old Soviet uh, bloc nations or old Soviet bloc states, part of the Soviet Union. And they're fighting with each other. So kind of file all that away as a backdrop to Putin's speech this morning. And the big takeaway is you got people who are protesting this big time. I'm not going to die for Putin. Terrified Russians begin anti-mobilization protests after one-way tickets fleeing Russia sold out following Vladimir's announcement that 300,000 reservists will be sent to Ukraine. So again, protests have sprung up across Russia now, this is a partial mobilization for Vladimir Putin of only 300,000 reservists. Mind you, the amount of troops that were moved into Ukraine in and around Ukraine are estimated to be 125 to 150,000. So they are calling up close to double, you know, two to three times what was moved in and around Ukraine. Uh, Putin threatened the West with nuclear weapons over Ukraine, telling leaders, I'm not bluffing. We're going to take a look at him. None of us understand Russian by and large, but you can look and you can make your determine if he's bluffing or if he's serious or whatever. Uh, again, flights have sold out. People are trying to escape a potential call up to the war. Occupied Ukrainian territories will be annexed to Russia. Putin said, and all means will be used to the, to defend them. That is four of them. Four of these uh, Ukrainian territories will go vote starting uh, September 23rd here in a couple of days, and they will vote through the 27th to determine whether or not they want to be annexed by Russia. And if they are annexed, they will immediately be considered part of Russia, as Putin puts it, and will use all means to defend them. Uh, Ukraine, for their part, saying this is predictable and shows that the war is not going as Putin planned. We do have Putin's full address down below. There's a lot of information to cover here, so we'll get started. Um, protests begin in Siberia and spread uh, throughout the country. Uh, well, it is, it is. It's in Moscow and St. Petersburg. Um no, Novosibirsk is also where there's a rally going on. I may have mispronounced that. My apologies. Um, I found this interesting. Anger erupted on social media, and a new word was even invented to describe the hell Putin has unleashed. Mogulization from the Russian word mogula, which means grave, and it's a morbid fate awaiting thousands drafted into the to the ar army. So they do not have a positive outlook on this. 
So you want to escape Russia to go to Johannesburg, South Africa, 44,000 pounds or roughly 50,000 bucks. Um, go to Dubai, 8,000 pounds, roughly 10,000 bucks. Uh, here's some of the video throughout Russia. We're just going to hit this briefly. This guy saying, I'm not dying for Putin. You know too well everything's all <clears throat> effed up. Uh, again, these are shots from uh, Novosibirsk. My mouth won't do that. This is in Moscow. Again in Moscow. All sorts of people being dragged, arrested, pictures being taken. Daily Mail does a great job with a lot of this stuff. Again, we're staying in Moscow. There you go. All lined up. Got their billy clubs ready to go. Arbot Street. No idea where that's at. More people. 800 arrested by security forces so far in Moscow. Um, that doesn't look like police officers. That looks like military gear. Well, it all looks like military gear, but you know, and that's the thing. Well, we'll get to that here in just a little bit, but you get the flavor and this is in the capital. This is in Yekaterinburg. They're not liking it there either. They're protesting, again, all across Russia, despite what you may be told. Heck, we're not even being told here in the West. By and large, our mainstream media has not given any lip service to this at all, other than what Biden's response is, which we'll talk about that here in a little bit. It's, it's, a, it's laughable. Um, people are questioning the war. Again, this is in Yekaterinburg. St. Petersburg. And then I like this. Uh, we got some propaganda. It's a poster, as you can tell. Family walks in front of a billboard promoting the military in St. Petersburg with the slogan, slogan, serving Russia is a real job. So you can have a real job serving Russia in the military. Now, here's where I want you to just take a look at Putin and just watch him. We will use all resources we have to defend our people. I tell the West, we have lots of weapons to reply. It's not a bluff. Now, look at that guy. Do you think he's serious or not? He's aging. He's in his mid to late 60s. Many people are questioning his health. It's his last hurrah. How's he going to be remembered and my concern is he's growing increasingly desperate. Things have not gone the way he would have wanted. I mean, he thought he was going to walk in there, clean house in about a week or less, and that was going to be that. And he was going to control more oil and gas and the transport of oil and gas and pipelines through uh, Ukraine. Well, it didn't work out that way. Had some pretty heavy losses. And now he's going to call up twice as many people than what he sent in. So, you know, the question is, do you believe he's serious? Again, tickets to Johannesburg, 49,000. We'll skip through that. Again, more, more protests. Another picture of Putin. Um... This is the Polish-Russian border, which now I guess a lot of these folks are scrambling. You got citizens, young men scrambling to get out of Russia. And as I understand it, there are um, laws being discussed, looking to be passed. If you don't participate and if you're called up 10 years in the gulag, uh, now Defense Minister Shoigu, as well as Putin, said the call-up would be limited to those with experience as professional soldiers and that students and those who had only served as conscripts would not be called up. Well, nobody's believing that. Uh, it's what they're selling, but people aren't believing it as evidenced by all the protests. Uh, 
<laughs> risk being jailed for weeks or years. Uh, I'd say years, 10, and you're not going to be sitting in a little country club prison. I'll bet you it's hard labor in the gulag. Um, who knows? Russian opposition says Putin has declared war on his people. And let's get into this. Meanwhile, the U.S. will retaliate with a devastating strike if Putin uses nuclear weapons in Ukraine. It doesn't say in Ukraine, but that's what that quote was all about. Russia is not going to use nuclear weapons on Ukraine. I don't believe that for one second. And I've heard him say it. We're going to live there. They're going to take that place over as they see it. They want to take it over, reclaim it, and govern it. I mean, they're not going to nuke a place where they're wanting to take control. They're not going to get rid of all the, you know, the serious infrastructure in and around the oil and natural gas. I mean, that makes no sense to blow something up and, and have it with nuclear fallout all over the place if they can't live there and grow. And I mean, that's like, it's called the breadbasket of Europe. It makes no sense, but you know, it's just me thinking out loud. Now what they, you know, what, what seems reasonable and what may happen, those are two different things. And I get that as well, but Biden's talking all tough. Don't, don't you cross a red line and use chemical weapons or nuke Ukraine. Well, I don't think they're going to do that. Now, if I was in Germany or, Great Britain, I'd be worried. They are directly talking about doing those things. And I've heard quotes, you know, you'll look like the Martian landscape in three minutes is what they're telling them. Um, That I believe. Uh, Putin vowed that he will use all available means to defend what he sees as Russian territory. I'm not bluffing. Now, he's talking about those four regions of Ukraine being annexed. And if they vote and agree to become part of Russia, Putin will consider that part of Russia. So Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporozhitsa, and Kyrgyzstan. Those are the four regions, areas, that are going to vote starting the 23rd of September here in a couple of days through the 27th. Now, Russia is there to make sure that these are fair, honest votes, and they're there for the people. So, <laughs> not like we've seen any voter fraud around the planet. <clears throat> uh, so, that's going to get started coming up this weekend. And in response to all this, the Russian stock market crashed about 10 12% today. Um, this is in Tomsk. People defiantly gather to protest in Tomsk. Um, scream, this one is interesting. Screaming former Putin advisor warns despot is ready to nuke Britain. Uh, Sergey Markov, skip the pleasantry. It's not a good morning for everybody. In Russia, there's partial mobilization. And for you British listeners, Vladimir Putin told you he would be ready to use nuclear weapons against Western countries, including Great Britain. Your cities will be targeted. Um, If Great Britain will continue to be the aggressor against Russia, if Prime Minister of Great Britain Liz Truss still has a plan to destroy Russia, people in London should understand the threat of nuclear weapons. Now, they're saying he's unhinged. He's not the only one saying that. I've seen plenty of other speeches by Russian politicians uh, on YouTube and on Twitter. And they're putting this stuff out in the public for people to see it. And they're all saying the same thing. They're going after Great Britain and they're going after uh, Germany. And they all make the comment that the place will look like the Martian landscape in about three minutes. So that's how long they figure it'll take to press the button, launch the missile, and hit its target in either Germany or Great Britain's about three minutes. Um, And they talk about, it's like, we will use a tactical nuclear weapon. Here's another one. Markov saying the same thing. Absolutely clear that Russia has no war against Ukraine. There's no reason to use tactical, tactical nuclear weapons against Ukrainians. 
No, they're going to do it against Great Britain and Germany. Those are the two countries they keep saying over and over. Everybody in the world is now thinking about nuclear war, which could be the result of crazy behavior of U.S. President Biden and Prime Ministers of Great Britain, Boris Johnson and Tress Markov retorted. So he's saying it. I've heard other politicians, other Russian politicians say the same thing. Um, I can't believe Zelensky is still alive. That's pretty amazing. Here is a retired Lieutenant General Ben Hodge. Hodges said the chance of Putin nuking Ukraine, very unlikely. I'd be in his camp. I'm no military expert, mind you, but that's just thinking out loud. Makes no sense to go nuke an area you want to control and live in. Um, There's Russia's Black Fleet. Take out the Black Fleet. You nuked Ukraine. Okay, whatever. Um, Again, this is the first mobilization since World War II. And down here at the bottom, there's a little bit of discussion about how many people have actually died. Both sides. I'm going to get to Putin's speech. Here's some more propaganda. Russians gather in front of a billboard in St. Petersburg displaying a picture of a Russian soldier along with the slogan, Glory to the Heroes of Russian Russia. After Putin announced, he will start conscripting men into the army. 300,000. The West says they will not recognize results of sham referendums. So if these four regions want to go join Russia, the West is not going to acknowledge it. Vowed never to respect the results of a sham referendum annexing parts of Ukraine to Russia. Now, they said this before Putin issued his new nuclear threat. So, And they've been talking... You know, but all these leaders, foreign leaders of the world are at the UN in New York this, you know, today and last night making these big speeches. Uh, it's its own set of issues. I'm not going to mess with it or cover it. Now, this is not a fireworks show. Um, this is from uh, Russian military rains down incendiary shells on Ukrainian village. Some would argue that's probably white phosphorus. I believe it's called the stuff hits stuff or the stuff falls out of the sky and things catch on fire. It's supposed to be illegal. It's supposed to be unfair putting that down on populations or even using that against combatants. It's not recognized as a legal war uh, munition, but it's happening. And <clears throat> there it is. Lawmakers also voted to introduce possible 10-year prison terms for soldiers refusing to fight in Russia. Here is Putin's address to the nation. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this. Russia may be split into many regions and areas which are fighting each other to the death. You know, Russia proposed a peaceful solution in Donbass, but it was rejected. The main aim of freeing the whole of Donbass remains without a change. So he wants to... Again, Annex, Donetsk, Donbass. Um, the professional army is taking part, and it's not called a war yet. It's still a special military operation. Got some volunteers fighting along with them. Luhansk is also one that they're looking to annex. As a result, there is a long line of military contact of over 1,000 kilometers. Again, uh, they offered some peace negotiations with Ukraine at in- Istanbul in Turkey. It was positive, but the West messed that up. They were not happy with a peaceful decision. It was all going to be good till the West stepped in. Um, the Kiev regime started using new bands of foreign mercenaries and nationalists, and the army was trained by NATO standards and actually commanded by Western commanders. 
the repression regime intensified across the whole of Ukraine by its military, who in 2014 used the politics of terror and intimidation, it becomes more and more barbaric and terrible. 7.5 million people lived before the start of the operation. Many were forced to become refugees who remained and are constantly bombarded by rockets and artillery on the part of the neo-Nazis who attack neo- hospitals, schools, and create acts of terror against peaceful citizens. Russia's fired nothing, of course. <clears throat> the parliament of the LPR, DPR, Kyrgyzstan, and Zaporozhitsa regions have decided to hold referendums on joining Russia and have asked Russia to support such a step. I stress that we will do all we can to create safe conditions to hold referendums so people can express their will and decision about the future. They will be supported by us. Um, Dear friends, today our army is directing at the front line exceeding 1,000 kilometers, and they are facing not just the neo-Nazis, but the collective military machine of the whole West. Yeah, and they're, they're kicking your butt is what's going on. Uh, your equipment has been deemed inferior. And frankly, the West is using second-rate armaments. Their, their new stuff is probably being trained there. But the West is looking to unveil its next generation of military equipment. And so they're selling what is effectively their second-rate military equipment to the Ukrainians and is being very effective. And so he deemed it necessary to make the following decision in defense of the motherland, ensure its safety, territorial integrity, security for people in the free territories. I deem it necessary to support the decision of the ministry of defense and the general command for a partial mobilization held in the Russian Federation. So 300,000 troops. He stresses that it's partial. <laughs> Mind you, it's twice the size of, of what he called up into the Ukraine. The decree has been signed officially. The chambers of the Federal Assembly and Duma will be informed. Start today on 21st of September. Okay. I stress that Russian citizens called up as part of mobilization will be given all the guarantees, all the benefits of those serving under contract. Uh, Includes additional measures to safeguard the state procurement for the defense concerning military technology and additional capacities for its production. All the financial matters for supplying defense factories shall be resolved without delay. The The West has crossed all lines. Um, constantly hear threats against our people. Some irresponsible politicians in the West are talking about not just providing Ukraine with long-range military systems that will be able to hit Russia. That's already happening. <clears throat> We're talking about border regions in Belgorod and systems using strategic drones, planes, doing reconnaissance across the South. Plans in Washington and Brussels to move the military action onto the Russian territory. So and now they're talking about nuclear blackmail. The Saporozitsa nuclear plant was shelled. Also, the high representative leading NATO states were saying that it might be permissible to use nuclear weapons against Russia. So they feel threatened. I don't remember hearing that, but anyway. So they, they, they see as they're being blackmailed with nuclear weapons. Should know the tables can be, turn on them. Um, in our historic tradition, our people had it in their destiny to stop those who are trying to subjugate our motherland and it will happen now. I believe in your support. So if you want to check that out, go into a little bit more detail. There is uh, Putin's speech and a link will be provided, uh, at YouTube and also at paulthepoke.com, which I'm going to close with this. And this is the Collective Security Treaty Organization. So this is like uh, the old Soviet blocs have gotten together and they kind of have their own little treaty powwow. It's like NATO light. We're going to talk about some other things. The Shanghai Cooperative Group. Uh, I think me and 
uh, Checkmate are going to get together later this weekend for an edition of the Watchmen. We'll probably talk about that. But this is the Collective Security Treaty Organization. It's a bunch of old Soviet blocks getting together. It includes Russia, Belarus, Armenia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan. And just to give you a feel again where these are, we got Russia here, obviously, Moscow. Here's Belarus. Uh, we have Armenia down here in the Caucasus, who's fighting with Azerbaijan right now. Kazakhstan. To the south of Kazakhstan, we have Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, which they're fighting against each other. Kyrgyzstan says they're being uh, invaded by hostiles from Tajikistan. But this is the Collective Security Treaty Organization, and they will all come together as one. And I think, you know, when you look at Ezekiel 38 and 39, it talks about, and others. Well, here are probably some of the others. And I think we're going to have some others that are going to come together. You have all the Iranian proxies, Hezbollah and their friends, the Houthis uh, off the Arabian Peninsula. So there are all kinds of proxies, others, if you will, that include the big boys of uh, Magog, that'd be Russia, Turkey, Persia, Iran, in the coming invasion from the north. So if you want to check this out, I'll also leave an, a link to the Collective Security Treaty Organization and um, check it out. They've been together for 30 years, 30 years protecting collective service security there in uh, Eurasia. So 30th anniversary, CSTO, together we are strong. We've got all the flags together. If you want to read some speeches, they've got them. It's the list of permanent council, council of ministers of foreign affairs. Got some pictures. There's Putin. He's involved. Uh, goes back to 2014 sessions. This is Zos Stanislav. Vasilovich, Secretary General, General of the Collective Security Treaty Organization. I'm sure he answers to Vladimir. Um, but you can check these things out. They do military drills together. They fight terrorism, extremism, peacekeeping, partnership, observation, illegal immigration. They fight drug trafficking. They do all kinds of good stuff. So, and they can be seen on YouTube if you want to check it out. So appreciate you guys taking the time. Interesting times. I think we're going to have some other stuff probably break. It'll be curious to see. I'm sure these referendums, they will agree to be annexed by Mother Russia. And then they'll probably, it will not surprise me if there's a declaration of war and things get very tense real quick. So, we'll probably know something by 27th, so that would be early next week. I think that's correct. And yeah, we got Wednesday the 21st. That'd yeah, be by next Tuesday. So, I'm sure the votes will go the way they, they want it to. Yeah. So, appreciate you guys following along. Stay tuned.